Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Begin to magnify the King. Oh, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Jesus. Father, we worship and magnify your name. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we stir up our hearts today. We have great expectation, God, that you're going to move mightily. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we worship you. We magnify your name. We've gathered in your name. We're calling to you. Show us, show us your power. Show us, 
You're so good and so faithful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Jesus. 
Jesus. Oh, Father, I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. Magnify your holy name. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We honor and magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a passage of scripture that I've had rolling around in my heart today. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, and then 16 through 18. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, and it says this, that we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do, but listen to this. Quitting is not an option. Mm -mm. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but we're not out. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then if you jump on down to verse 16, it says this. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal, weighty glory far beyond comparison. But listen to this. Because we don't focus our attention on what is seen. Come on now, think about this. It's a trick of the enemy for us as believers to focus our attention on everything that's going on right here. What's going on in front of us, all the, the stuff that's coming at us from every side. Our flesh wants to focus on what is seen right in front of us. But it says... Because we don't focus our attention on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For, this, for what is seen is temporary. What you're seeing right now, the circumstance, the situation that you're going through right now, did you hear what it says? It's temporary. It's temporary. It can't stay. But the unseen realm is eternal. And I said this in first service a few years ago when David Ellis was here. He said something that has stuck with me, and it was this. Don't let the seen rob you of the unseen. Come on, because that's how the enemy works. He wants you to get so caught up and focused and all your attention on what is seen and all the negativity and all the attacks going on around you that your focus stays there and then you stay stuck. Because he has a place of victory for you and I as believers. He's got a way out of whatever the circumstance is that we're facing. And, and we keep going back to this scripture. And it's Psalm 42, 5, where the psalmist David was saying, why am I discouraged? Why am I dis disturbed? I will trust you, Lord, for you are my help and my God. One translation says, why are you cast down, O my soul? He was talking to himself. You know, sometimes as believers, we have to talk to ourselves and say, come on, get up. Why are you discouraged? Why are you disturbed? Why are you distressed? And you know what it is? It's because our focus is on the wrong thing. We're so focused on what is going on, the attacks against us. And so, of course, if you're going to focus on that, you're going to get discouraged real quick. Because how the enemy comes in, he wants to blow up whatever it is you're facing to make it seem impossible, like there is no way out. But I read in my Bible that it says, with God, all things are possible to those who believe. And so he's saying to himself, why are you discouraged? Why are you down in the dumps? Why are you in despair? Put your hope in God. In other words, pull your, your collar up. Pull your 
yourself up by the neck and say, get up. My help is in the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. I don't care what it looks like. And the funny thing about it is your flesh never wants to do that. Because it feels good in your flesh. Come on, I'm being real. How do I know this? Because I've been there recently. Have you ever heard the term new levels, new devils? Yeah, come on. We've been going through some stuff, but I refuse to focus my attention on the stuff because I have a promise in the word of God and I know my father, I know my daddy God and I don't care what it is that comes against me, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Over in John 14, verse 1, it says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. Like David said this week, God's got you. He's got me. And so let's quit focusing our attention on what is going on here because it is a trick of the enemy to keep you stuck and in that situation but instead lift up your eyes where's your help come from my help comes from the Lord there is a way out for you I don't care I don't know who it's for today maybe it's just for me But whatever it is you're facing, God has a way out. He knew that you would be in this place today. And he already provided a way out for you. And so we get to choose. Are we going to stay here? Or are we going to raise and praise? Instead of looking here, let's look here. Let's look here and see what he says and determine like Paul, man, I'm crushed. You know, things are coming at me on every side. I'm getting hit this way, from the back, from the front, from this side. And it looks like there's no way. It looks like I have one nostril above the water. I'm this close to going down. But God. But God. But God. He is faithful. And he's already made a way out. And so like David, I'm going to talk to myself. And I'm going to say, self, let's stir up yourself today. I'm not staying where I've been. I refuse to be discouraged at what is going on around me. I will look to the word and focus my life on the word and my attention on the word that says, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. The word that says, I'm an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Thanks be to God who sometimes causes me to triumph. No, come on, talk back to me. Always causes me to triumph. With God, all things are possible. And so sometimes we have to look ourselves right in the mirror and say, self, you're going through. Self, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You're victorious. You're making it. And not just making it. Prosperous. Abundantly making it. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. I don't know who that's for today. Be encouraged. It is not hopeless. Because hope lives in you. Hallelujah. He is hope. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So lift your hands and begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we look to you. We look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, God, we stir ourselves up today. Hallelujah. God, you're good, and you're faithful. We honor you in this place. Oh, your goodness is running me today. Hallelujah. Sing that part, your goodness. Hallelujah.
think about the words of this song. All my life it happened so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, Father, we worship and honor you. Hallelujah. Just think about that. All the times that he's been faithful. I would say a lot of us wouldn't be here if it weren't for the faithfulness of God. And if he's been faithful to you then and before, guess what? He's faithful now. And if he brought you out of something else way back when, guess what? He'll, brought you out of, or he'll bring you out of this right now. Hallelujah. He's so good. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you. We open our hearts to you today, Father. We ask you to give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts that are open and receptive to you, Father. When we come to church, we don't want to just leave like we came, but we purpose to leave changed because of your presence because we've encountered Jesus. Father, we honor you in this place. We exalt you in this place today. And Lord, I ask you to minister to the hearts of the people. Father, you know what each and every person is facing today. And Lord, I ask you to minister to their needs today. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. Hallelujah. And everybody said, amen. Kids, you're dismissed. Turn around and greet somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them, and then you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. Man, don't you just love the presence of God? So refreshing. Well, we want to say welcome to any first-time guests that we may have. We're glad that you're here with us at Midwest Believers Church. If you did not stop by the Welcome Center, um, that's the big round thing out in the foyer, please do so. At the end of the service, we have a free gift for you and uh, have a little card for you to fill out so we can have record of your visit. But we are glad that you're here worshiping with us. We have two services on Sunday, a 9 a.m. and a 10.30, and then we have a midweek service on Wednesdays at 7. And this week is our fellowship night. And so uh, for the summer, we're doing last Wednesday fellowship night. And I told first service, just everyone bring what you brought last month because it was all so good. And so we're asking that you bring an appetizer to share or a dessert, and we'll be set up out in the coffee shop for your area, and uh, we're just going to have a night of just visiting. And last, last month, we had some people share some testimonies, but this month, some missionary friends of ours will be passing through town. If you all remember uh, Joab and Amanda Fisher, they are missionaries to China and because of COVID, they have been stateside and can't get back into China because of all the restrictions. And so um, they've been doing some overseas stuff and just moved their family to Turkey. And so, and they have like six kids, little ones, and mainly boys. <laughs> Can I, need I say more? No, I'm just joking. But um, they messaged us and said they're passing through. And so we asked if he would just give a little update on the ministry and uh, I know last time they were here, everybody enjoyed hearing from them. So if you can come out Wednesday night, um, I know they would love to say hi to you. And then also um, next Sunday, we are going to go do our uh, fuel card outreach. And um, we are over 130 fuel cards. So praise God for that. If you're interested, we're going to go after the second service. There are sign-up sheets out there at the Welcome Center for you to sign up to go to a specific um, gas station. If you cannot go with a group after church and want to take a couple and give them out on your own, that will be fine too. Just see me so I can give you some information on how to go about doing that. But we're going to go be a blessing to our community. 
And so um, what I had in mind is what we'll do if, if you're there and a big truck pulls up, we're going to do two cards. Because, you know, to fill a big truck, it's a lot more money. And so that'll take 50 bucks off of their uh, gas bill. And then um, if it's a smaller vehicle, we'll do a $25 one. And so um, I'm super excited about that. And I believe we're going to see, you know, just so love to these people and be able to be a light um, to the Lord and then, or in our community. And then I wanted to read a text message. David Ellis texted us last night and he said, hey guys, just thinking about and praying for you and for your service tomorrow. He said, be bold and encouraged. Great increases coming to you and your faithful people. I expect some supernatural surprises in God-sized proportion to happen for the congregation. Stay in expectation, stay stirred up. And again, great increases here for Midwest Believers Church. So praise God. He was praying for us last night and just had it on his heart to send that to us. And so, um, you know, we're expecting. We're expecting. And so we appreciate everybody sewing towards the, the fuel cards. Turn on my flashlight. I'm famous for that. I'll be walking around my flashlights on. And I don't even know how I do it. That's the weird thing. But anyway, um, so sign up at the Welcome Center if you're interested in that. And it won't take long. And so maybe if you only have a few minutes after church, um, maybe they can, if you want to go with a group, you can just take one and do one and then go about your way. So it'll be an easy um, outreach. And so you got to get in on it. It's going to be fun. Praise the Lord. And then also, Called Me Higher Ladies Meeting is in Effingham, August 11th through the 13th. So ladies, if you haven't signed up for that, please do so. Jennifer was asking me uh, what ladies were coming from the church. So if you're interested in that, get on there and sign up so that they can be getting a count for everything that they need. Aren't you excited about what God is doing? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say the Lord is good. Lord is good. Amen. If you need an offering, I will slip your hand up in the air, and the ushers will get that for you. We're excited about this uh, gas outreach, and it gives us an opportunity to uh, so just be a blessing to people in our community. Amen. How surprised will they be when you walk up not asking for something but giving them something? And, uh, and uh, so praise God. That will be a blessing. Now, one thing we talked about is this is this is actually sowing seed, you know, seed time and harvest. We understand that, it, uh, you know, with fields and corn and all that kind of stuff. But it also works concerning finances. As a matter of fact, everything in the Bible is based on that principle of seed time and harvest. And uh, so as we sow these gas cards, we're sowing to our... My pastor used to say, so to your own success. And so he was, uh, so we are sowing to where we get our eyes. We're endeavoring to turn people's eyes to Jesus. You know, on that card, it says, <clears throat> my God will supply all your needs. And on the back, it says, we got this. And, um, you know, it's, we're endeavoring to get people's eyes on Jesus. So we, as the person taking the cards, we can't get our eyes on the gas prices and things like that. And I would encourage you, as you're going to fill your tanks this week, don't, don't be so gas price conscious. Be, the Lord supplies all my needs. Yes, I don't care what that price says on there. I don't care if it's over $100 to fill my tank. I, I, I don't care. I care more that Jesus is my supply. Yes. And he is my source. And so... Uh, you know, don't and don't get into that conversation this week about complaining about gas prices because, you know, people are talking about it all over Facebook and people are posting prices and all that kind of don't get into that conversation. Amen. Keep your heart set on the Lord as your source and the Lord is your supply. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Uh, heard somebody one time. They said complain and remain. Amen. So if we want to stay right where we are, then complain about it. If you want to stay right where you are, go ahead, complain about it. Amen. Amen. Because God doesn't answer complain. He answers, uh, he doesn't answer complaining. He answers faith. Right. Amen. Amen. Faith is what gets God's attention, not complaining. Right. 
Well, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Shut up. Amen. <laughs> um, the squeaky wheel, that may work on the natural level, but that doesn't work with the Lord. Just because somebody's squeaking real loud doesn't mean, uh, doesn't mean that uh, they're in line for the blessing. Faith. The Lord said this, I will look over the whole earth. The Holy Spirit was looking over the whole earth to see somebody that was in faith. Amen. Praise God. Well, you know what? We're going to be those people. Amen. We're going to be those people. We're not going to be complainers. We're not going to be complainers about the situation that we're in. We're not going to complain about it. We're just going to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. We're going to be happy, yes. joyful. You ought to be so happy when you go up to the gas pump with a big smile on your face. And somebody says, how can you have a smile on your face? Nobody else has a smile on their face when they're coming up to the gas pump. Because my God supplies all my needs. I know that he's my provider. Thank God for my job. Thank God. But where that ends... He, he is there. Amen. And he's my source. And he's my supply. Amen. Amen. Let's pray over this offering. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are faithful. You're faithful to us. And you're faithful in our finances. And Lord, we, we look to you. You are our source. You are our supply. We look to you and we trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody say the Lord is good. Amen. After you give this morning, turn, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. We're going to read a couple, couple verses here. <clears throat> oh, God is so good to us. You know, we started several weeks ago, we started talking about right thinking. Amen. Amen. Right thinking, thinking like God thinks. Because uh, David, David Ellis, when he was here, he, he, uh, one thing that he said was, we are limited, this isn't probably exactly the way he said it, but we are limited by the level of our thinking. In other words, we can't go any farther or higher than our thinking will allow us to go. Amen. Amen. And so it's important that we have his thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says this, the new living says this, for my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Uh, just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I want to read this out of the New English translation. It says, indeed, my plans are not like your plans. How many your plans ever messed up? Anybody ever messed up? You know, God's plans never messed up. Never messed up. Never, never failed. He's always faithful. Somebody say he's always faithful. So we need to just get in his plan and scrap our plans and get in his plan for our life. And uh, we'll have success as we follow him. Amen. Um, uh, my plans are not like your plans. My deeds are not like your deeds. For just as the sky is higher than the earth, somebody say higher. higher, so my deeds are superior to your deeds, and my plans superior to your plans. Somebody say this, say superior. superior. Do you notice that he never once said there, you can't know my plans. You can't know my ways. My ways are so high that you'll never know them. He never said that. That's not the point he was making there. He was just making the point that my, hand, my, my plans are better than your plans. My ways are higher. Amen. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You know, several places in the, in the scripture tells us that we should have his thoughts. Know his ways. We should follow his way. Amen. If I can't ever know it, how can I follow it? If I can't ever know his way. And sometimes people have said, and religion has said, that you never know what God is going to do. Well, we know what God is going to do because he does what his word says he will do. He is faithful to that word, and there's not even a shadow of turning. Amen. He's not turning, and not even his shadow is looking like it's going to maybe fix him to turn. Amen. He is steady. And stable. And if he said it in his word, 
then that's what he does. That's why we can trust him. Has anybody thought about the chair you're sitting in? Well, God is more faithful than that chair you're sitting in. And nobody even gave it two thoughts. You probably didn't push on it and go, man, I don't know. What, what about these legs? I'm not sure if it'll, it'll hold me or whatever. Nobody thought about it. Everybody just came in and sat down. Well, the same way and even more, he is faithful and steady and he's not moving. Amen. He's not shaking. I don't care what you're facing. He's not shaking and not moving. Amen. Amen. And so we can have his thoughts. We can know his ways. Amen. We can know his faithfulness. Now I want you to look at something. <coughs> Go ahead and put that up, up there, what Rhonda was reading and we looked at earlier. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. In the, what did you do that? The Amplified? The Passion. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I guess I could look over in my Bible. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, you have it? Oh, there it is. There it is. Thank you. Amen. I was like, I'm going to read this out of the King James and all the these and thous. And so anyway, it says, verse 8, though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. Let me just say, life is full of pressure. Pressure from here. Pressure to do things that you, may, maybe that, maybe that you know is not right there's pressure to do things pressure to go places sometimes there's peer pressure you know there's all kinds of pressure on our lives and and it says though we experience every kind of pressure we're not crushed at times we don't know what to do but quitting is not an option right. amen. amen somebody says i i don't know what to do. I feel like just giving up. I'm just, I'm just going to give up. Just throw my hands in the air. So I give up. I give up. I can't do this anymore. People say that kind of stuff all the time. But that's not people whose eyes are on Jesus. That's not people whose eyes are on the word of God. He says, if you'll keep your eyes on me, he said this, Though we experience every kind of pressure. Well, you don't understand the kind of pressure that I've been under. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. You don't understand what I've been going through. No, I don't. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You don't understand how it's been. I know it's been hard. And I know it hasn't been easy. But the answer is not to give up. The answer is not to throw your hands in the air. The answer is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because the Lord said this. He said over in Isaiah, he said, my ways are higher. My thoughts are higher. What are his ways? The not crushed ways. The not crushed ways. Uh, the not quitting. I love how this says this. We do not, at times, we don't know what to do. But quitting's not an option. Amen. I don't know what to do, but I know this, I'm not going to stop. I don't know what to do, but I know this, I will not give up. I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, as I said, I don't, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Amen. See, where our eyes are uh, uh, can make or break us in life. Where our eyes are. If our eyes aren't on the Lord, then we're not assured that we're not going to experience the not crushed. Amen. Uh, if our eyes are on everything else, we're not, we're not assured that we're not going to quit. Amen. We don't have that on the inside of us if our eyes are in the wrong place. But we keep our eyes on the Lord. It doesn't matter what kind of pressure. You push over this side. You push over this side. You squeeze me. Uh, amen. amen. Anybody ever had life put the squeeze on you? 
Oh, my goodness. Even if you feel like your squeezer's been squeezed. Amen. You're just like, I don't know what to do. But I do know this one thing. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. And I won't be crushed. If it's just putting one foot in front of the other, my eyes are on Jesus. I don't know what to do, but I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. Devil, you can, you can put pressure on me, but I'm not quitting. Amen. You know that makes the devil so mad when you get that determination in your heart. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting, and I won't be crushed. Mm -mm -mm. You know, let me just say it this way. I found for myself when I felt crushed, so maybe, maybe somebody said something or did something, and I felt like, oh, just so crushed. If I would just get my eyes on Jesus. There's a song, and I know this isn't scripture, but there's an old song that says, Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. I know that's not scripture, but it's true. If we look at him, that will grow dim. Amen. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, Man, these things that are so big and looming so large will grow strangely dim. Go to, flip to 16. Yeah, 16. Praise God. For which cause we faint not. Say, I won't faint. This, uh, that, uh, the Passion Translation says this. So no wonder we don't give up. <laughs> For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. Every single day. Even though the outer person gives up, there's something on the inside of you that says, I won't give up. I won't quit. I want to add something here. In this scripture, I love how it says, <clears throat> so no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. And that right there is a key to not quitting. I love how those are in the same verse. So no wonder we don't give up. Why? Because our inner being is being renewed every single day and I said this in the first service and I want you to get this I heard a minister say this and it has just been stuck with me the last couple of weeks and it's this your greatest defense against the devil is the renewed mind your greatest defense against the devil is the renewed mind why is that what is the renewed mind it's where you're getting into the word every single day because when you're born again and you give your heart to Jesus, there's some, your spirit man is saved. But your mind, your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, has to be renewed. Because you have a certain way of thinking. Maybe we were all brought up in different homes and, and we have different ways of thinking. And so you may have a worldly way of thinking, but what we have to do now that we're believers, we have to change our thinking to think like God thinks. And how we do that is by renewing our minds. And that just simply means reading the word, getting it on the inside of us. And he quoted earlier that God's thoughts and his ways are higher than our thoughts and our ways. And so if we want to learn to think like God, we have to read and study how he thinks. And that we simply do that by renewing our minds. And as we renew our minds, you know, I use you all that have been here for a long time, I use this example all the time, who you hang out with, you'll act like. It's so true. When my kids were little, I always knew who they were hanging out with because they would act like whoever it was. And I could say, oh, you've been around, usually it was Peyton. I'd say, you've been around Bub and because he has a funny sense of humor and then they would be joking, <coughs> excuse me, like he did. 
And it's so true. You hang out with God. You spend time with God putting his thoughts on the inside of you, putting his way of thinking, putting his ways on the inside of you. What happens then when circumstances and situations arise, you see them from a different perspective. You don't just see them you know, out here in front of you and your gaze and your focus is right there. That's what keeps us down and discouraged. But because I've been depositing God's word on the inside of my heart, when a circumstance or a situation arises, I've made a deposit on the inside so I can go withdraw what I've put on the inside of me. And the cool thing about doing life when you're a believer is that you don't have to do it in your own strength. When you were born again, the Spirit of God went on the inside of you. And then once you're born again and you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you with the evidence of speaking in tongues, man, that takes you to a whole different level. And he enables you, he empowers you, if you will, to be able to walk out the life that he has for you. And I tell you what, I've done it both ways. I've done it in my own strength, and I can only go so far in my own strength. I've done it in his strength, and it's a whole lot better. It's a whole lot better. But I love that the greatest defense against the enemy is the renewed mind. And so when the pressure is on for you to give up, for you to back down, for you to quit, get into the word of God. Find out what he says about you. Find out what he says about your circumstance or situation and magnify that. Keep your focus and attention on him. I think it says on down, it says, we view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as a substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory for, far beyond all comparison, because we don't focus our attention on what is seen. We don't focus our attention on what is seen. Where's your focus? Where's your attention? Are you consumed with what is going on in front of you? That's why the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And that's why it's important what our focus and our attention is on. Because what we focus on is going to get on the inside of us, and it will produce that fruit. And so it takes effort to change our focus. And I love using this example. Where's Derek? Is he, he's, he's in here. Derek's a pilot. One of these days, he's going to have a plane so he can fly us all these places, right? All right. But anyway... I like to use this example, and you've heard me say it before. One time we were flying out of Indy to Florida, and it was like the worst snowstorm. And it looked like blizzard conditions, and our flight kept getting delayed and delayed. And for one, I hate when they say, well, we got to de-ice the plane again. I'm like, okay, great. And so anyway, finally we were taking off, and, you know, as we were climbing up, the snow was blowing everywhere, and I wasn't real comfortable, to be honest. I, I just wasn't thrilled with it. I'd rather it be nice and clear, you know, when I'm flying, not a snowstorm. And so we just kept climbing, but I've flown enough to know that eventually, if the pilot will keep the nose up, eventually we'll break through those clouds. And then when you break through those clouds, what do you see? Beautiful sunshine and all that junk is down there. But down here, all I could see was the storm blowing around us. And it is the same way with the things of God. When our focus and attention is on the storm blowing, then we're going to stay in that. I mean, it magnifies it. It's like holding a magnifying glass up to it. What does a magnifying glass do? It makes it bigger. And so when your, you know, your focus is on this problem, this problem, this problem. Believe me, we all have them. But instead, like that plane, keep your nose up, and eventually you'll break through those clouds. We need to be looking at things from God's perspective. There was a whole different view from this level up here. I liked it a lot better. I like seeing the sunshine, not the snow. 
But it's the same thing with the, the things of God. If we'll focus our attention on him, get into the word, renew our minds, that will give us the stamina to be able to stand and not quit and not give up when it gets hard and the pressure is on. Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. And especially in the day and the hour that we're living in because Jesus is coming soon and people need what you and I have. And he wants us to draw back and he wants us to faint and he wants us to quit because there's somebody that needs Jesus from you. And so there's some things that we can do. And it's not just coming to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's a daily relationship, digging into the word to walk in the victorious life that God has for us. But it takes something on our end. It's not just going to fall in our laps. It's really not. And then in getting into this, we're going to go into a series on this later. But as believers, we need to look different than the world. We shouldn't be living like the world lives. It seems like nowadays sometimes you can't tell the difference between the church and the world. It shouldn't be. There's a place, a higher level that God has for us as believers. And it takes us getting into this word, finding out what his, his ways and his thoughts are, getting them on the inside of us, and then walking them out. And being God's light in this world and displaying his goodness everywhere that we go. Come on. Hallelujah. It's stirring on the inside of me. I refuse to back down. I don't care what comes my way, and I don't know who I'm talking to and what you're dealing with today. It may be hard, and the pressure is on, and you feel like there is no way out, and that it can't change for you, but that is a lie from the enemy because God has gone before you, and he has already made a way, and he has victory for you, and he has victory for me, and with God, all Things are possible to those who believe. Will you believe it today? Your greatest defense against the enemy is the renewed mind. It's vital for us to function in what God has called the believer to function in. We got to step it up. And this is what God's been dealing with me about and stirring me on the inside because there's things that he has for us, higher levels for us to go as believers, but I have a part to play. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Stay with it. He's faithful. And we'll see you through. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, go back to 17. We view our slight, somebody say slight. slight. That's a small, you know, I don't want a slight piece of pie. I want, just give me the whole pie. You know, as a matter of fact, just make it extra, you know, and we'll, we'll do it that way. Uh, we view our slight, short-lived troubles. This is... God's view. Do you remember we were talking about his ways are higher? His ways are higher. And so we can look at this and see what we see as big, he sees as small. What we see as overwhelming, he sees as, as just a slight thing. But it depends on where our eyes are because like Rhonda said, if we begin to, if we continue to look at the problem, it only magnifies the problem. Anybody Anybody with me that you've ever been talking? And man, I've had some arguments with people in my head, you know, because I'm a lover, not a fighter. But up here, we can do it. Amen. And so, but, but I've, if they say this, I'll say this. If they say this, I'll say this. Well, you know what? I may just say this just to bring it up. And then we can have the discussion, the intense discussion. But he won't do it. <laughs> but I won't do it. I talk myself out of it every time. I'm like, no, that's not. That, 
that wouldn't be good. And so, but the thing about it is, the longer that I focus on the issue, the bigger the issue gets. Somebody, this was sales training, but um, I haven't found a scripture for it yet, but, um, but anyway, it's good anyway. But he said, if you make it an issue, you're going to need a tissue. <laughs> I thought that was, a, that was like a little good reminder because if I continue to focus on it, the issue is going to get bigger and bigger. And I just, I just need to at some point just say, no, wait a second, wait a second. If I'll just increase the elevation, if I'll just go higher with God, if I'll focus on him for a little bit, if I'll focus on him, then I begin to see things from his perspective. And what looks so big, what looks so ominous, what looks like there is no way, he said, we view our slight, short-lived. Somebody say short-lived. Short you know, some people are going through stuff and they think that it's always going to be this way. That it's never going to end. It's always going to be this way. But the Lord looks at it and says, short-lived. Short-lived. What's that mean? Short-lived. It might be over tomorrow. It might be over tomorrow. I'm going to quit focusing on it. You know, sometimes if I just quit focusing on an issue, it ceases to be an issue. Yeah. If I just quit getting my eyes on it, quit taking up mental uh, space, I guess is the word. Uh, if I just quit uh, taking up space in my mind for all these problems, if I'll just get my eyes on Jesus, all of a sudden, he says, it's only slight. I'm like, yeah, it's only slight. I remember when we were flying to, we have a lot of flight stories. We haven't flown a lot, but, but we do. Today, we're telling a lot of stories. But we were on a, a trip to Malaysia, and we had to fly into LAX. And we flew right over uh, uh, the Grand Canyon. And I've never been to the Grand Canyon. Never, I've never stood by it or never seen it. And so as we were... As we were flying over, the captain said, if you look to your right, you can see the Grand Canyon. And it looked so small. I mean, it was just like this little bitty thing. Why was it? Why was it so small? Because we were at a higher elevation. And when you get down there, all of a sudden you look at it and you go, holy moly, this thing's wide. Look at the river running down through there. And man, it'd take me like two days to get down there. And, and uh, anyway. But from that level, it was so small, so insignificant. Sometimes we're hitting our head. We're banging our head up against the wall. It seems like it's never going to be over, never going to end. Maybe you're believing God for a relative. Maybe you're believing God for healing. You know, maybe you're believing God concerning your finances, whatever it might be. I want to encourage you today, get your eyes on Jesus. Begin to see things from his perspective. Sometimes I've come into a service and I think, uh, I think, man, this thing is such a big deal to me. It's such a big deal. There is no way out. And as we begin to praise and worship God, what is, you know, part of the purpose of praising and worshiping God is not just so that we can come on, sing better. Oh man, I, I just love, I just love the way the drums sound. I just love the way the, the bass sounds or the guitar or whatever, or the piano or something. I just love the way that sounds. Well, you know, that's not the purpose for that. The whole purpose is so that we can come in and we're all together and we're worshiping Jesus. Together, we get our eyes on Jesus. Because God wants to do something in our lives, but as long as we continue to look at the problem, uh, we're going to continue to live in the problem. Uh, but if we'll, can, if we'll begin to look at him. And so that's part of the reason we get our eyes focused on him. And I've come into a service. I remember one night I came into a service and I didn't have to back up seeing this is back at Grace Fellowship in Paris, Illinois. And uh, not Paris, France. Side note, when I met Rhonda, we were going to lunch. And she said, I need to stop. I need to stop by the ATM and get some money out of my Paris account. And I thought, 
pair. If anybody has a Paris account, man, this is this is awesome. I didn't know it was Paris, Illinois. And uh, anyway, but praise God. Anyway, fell in love with her not for her Paris account. And but anyway, but. What point was I making before I jumped in here? I shouldn't have taken that side journey, but I just thought of it. So, but I want to encourage you on this, uh, just real briefly here. As we were talking this morning, we were kind of talking about this this morning, and as she was talking, the Lord brought up to me, you know, man is a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And when you are born again, your spirit is the part of you that gets born again. Not your soul, not your body. Because you know your body still wants, you know, fleshly stuff. You know, and the mind is still going to go off somewhere. But what Rhonda was talking about, renewing the mind, what we're talking about is thinking like God thinks. And so... As we were, as I was thinking about that this morning, and, you know, there's a lot of pressure that comes, doubts and fears about maybe maybe physical things or, or you know, uh, certain different areas of people's lives. And, um, you know, your, mi- your, your mind and your body are not born again. And you might have all kinds of pressure from your mind thinking, there is no way. There's no way out of this. Man, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. You think I'm stuck on this job. I'm stuck in this place. I'm stuck in this house. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this physical condition. I'm stuck in this financial condition. And you have all these thoughts. And especially, uh, especially uh, physical things, but you may, uh, like health wise, you may be feel I'm stuck in this pain I'm stuck here I'm stuck there and you know two-thirds of your body is not born again two-thirds of your being I should say is not born again so you know what we have to double up on the work you know what your spirit has to be stronger than the thoughts than the discouragement your spirit has to be stronger than the pain the Bible says somebody say the Bible the The strong spirit of a man will sustain him what will sustain you a strong spirit how does that happen by showing up to church you know that's wonderful I'm so glad you're here this morning I'm not discounting that but I'm saying tomorrow morning there's gonna be pressure tomorrow morning we've got to be we've got to have a strong spirit so you know we have to start out the day Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you're teaching me and you're showing me your word. And we have to double up. And you may have to double up, triple up, and, you know, quadruple up. Whatever it takes, I'm getting into the word of God. Amen. Your life will go in the, in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. And so that's why it's important that we renew our minds And I was thinking about this, renewing the mind. One translation of that scripture that talks about being transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind, that's actually the renovation of your mind. That means you're taking out your old way of thinking. Just think about when somebody renovates a house. Who watches HGTV besides me? Somebody said that's Holy Ghost TV. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. But if you watch the renovations of that stuff, they go in on demo day and they tear out all the old. And then thank God they don't just stop there. They replace everything with new. And that's what we have to do as believers when we give our lives to the Lord. We've we've had years, depending on when you got saved, years of certain ways of thinking that probably don't line up with the word of God. And so we have to take out all that old stuff tear it out but we don't want to just take out the old stuff we've got to replace it with what he says we've got to renovate our minds with the word of god so that when the storms of life come we've got something different that we can respond with because maybe you grew up in a family where 
They thought, well, you'll never make it because of who you are, what side of the tracks you're on or that kind of thing, you know, stuff like that, that way of thinking, well, forget it. I'm not even going to try because nobody in my family ever made it. Maybe you've had that way of thinking. Well, what you need to do is pull that out and replace it with, hey, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm taking out that old way of thinking and putting in a new way of thinking. And so that's, that's why the renewal of our minds is the greatest defense against the enemy. Because that gives, that's our defense. That gives us something to stand on, something to answer the storms, the attacks that come our way. We answer those things with the word. Amen. I uh, asked JR if he would bring some of these up. There are helps to renewing the mind. And we put some scriptures on concerning uh, healing and financial and strength and not fearing. Uh, you know, people can get into so much fear that it's almost, it almost um, freezes them. They can't make a move because they're in such fear. Anybody ever been there? I've been there. Thinking, oh no. Well, God doesn't want you to live that way. Right. Amen. And so in renewing the mind, <clears throat> you know, go out there, take advantage of these. Go on the website and take advantage of those. I mean, it's just a, they're just, you can just read them right off the page. You can go on the healing scriptures. If you're battling healing scriptures, this will get you started. Yes, amen. amen. If you're battling concerning your finances, instead of change, instead of staying in that and thinking there's no hope there's no way out you can start to find out what does the bible said and this isn't total but this is some and these are scriptures concerning finances scriptures concerning strength scriptures concerning there's some more out there concerning peace take advantage of those amen, amen. i had a guy that was here during uh, nancy the frame and he said I don't know who put all those scriptures on your website, but you need to tell them thank you because I have it on a shortcut on my phone, and I've never met the guy before. And he goes, I just realized that this was the church that did that. And so, and he was like, I use it all the time, use it all the time. And so I want you to go to that. Let's renew our minds. Let's not stay where we are. Amen. Amen. And how many, you know, going to heaven is better than going to hell, right? But God has so much. That's just the beginning. He has so much for you, so much for you. He said over in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, he said, he said, I have good plans for you, good plans for you, uh, good paths for you to walk in. Amen. God's plan for your life is a good plan. But we don't just get it just because we show up somewhere. Uh, like, like Brother Hagin, you say, like ripe cherries off a tree, so they're just going to fall on you. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come because the devil does not like you. That's kind of a, a light bulb moment. But the devil doesn't like you. But God loves you. Amen. Amen. And his plan for you is good. Amen. His plan for you, he has a good plan for you. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our head for just a minute. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we are going higher. That we're not staying where we are. That we're not staying in the place that we are. We're not satisfied. Oh, God, you have such good things for us. So many blessings, and we thank you and praise you for it. Father, we determine right now that we won't quit. We won't be crushed by pressure. We won't stop. We won't be uh, weary and well-doing. But Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Jesus name with every head bowed and eyes closed somebody either in the room or out watching on Facebook you say you know 
Number one, I need to make I need to make things right with God. I've accepted Christ, but I need to renew my fellowship with Him. And that may be you. There may be somebody that says, I've never asked Jesus into my heart. And right now, I want to do that. That may be you. So if you're in the room, I just want you to slip up your hand. If you're out on watching on Facebook, you can slip up your hand, but message us on Facebook. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Say this, say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe that you went to the cross, that you went to hell for me, that God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart. I renew fellowship with you in your name amen amen if you prayed that prayer we just believe you've been born again amen if you're in the room or out watching the live stream praise God AJ do you do you mind coming up we want to pray for you this is AJ's last Sunday just as a couple couple weeks that he's in town and um, so we want to we want to pray for AJ and uh, we just believe you're gonna have a great great season amen and the best thing is your uh, witness that's what you have that very few that have gotten to that level have is your witness and it's, yes, and it's not a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. Religion goes from Sunday to Sunday, but relationship is every day. And we're so proud of you, but we just want to lay hands on you and pray for you this morning. Amen. I want him to tell what he, what he does, because some of you may not even know what he does. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, he's shorter than she is. <laughs> Officially, you all have to be Atlanta Hawks fans for now. So that's just wear your Hawks gear. I don't have any yet, by the way. Okay. Hook <laughs> me up. But I want to say, too. You know how I am. But AJ has a goes, yeah. special place in my heart. Just the witness and how we've seen God transform. Like right before our eyes it's been really cool and how you love the Lord and the testimony that you have God's hand was on AJ and I know you're playing basketball now and I believe you'll do that for some seasons but down the road I can see where God's gonna open doors for you to minister and you're gonna share your story and lives are gonna be changed and people are going to set, be set free because of what you shared with them. Because it's the truth. And so stand your ground. Stay with it. God's hand is on you. You're anointed for this season. I'm not just talking about the basketball season, but this season of your life. And so we're excited and know that we're praying for you. And we got you. Stretch your hands out towards AJ. Casey, you want to come up? No, girls. Kayla, mom and dad, you guys want to come up? No. Brody, Kathy, family, Brody, bring the fam. Michael? You didn't know I, we had this much family in here, did you? 
Hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're so, so thankful for what you're doing in AJ's life. God, you've been so faithful, just like the song that we sang earlier. God, you have been so faithful. And Father, we thank you that your hand is upon him, that you lead, you guide, you direct his every step. Father, that he fulfills the plans and the purposes that you have for his life, that you connect him with the right friends, the right people. Father God, that every place he goes, that he's led by the Spirit of God and that he's anointed for this season. And Father, I ask you to protect him, strengthen his physical body, protect him from injuries, every part of his foot, his ankle, his knees, his body. Father God, I thank you that he is strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And Father, we just thank you and praise you that every need that he has is met. Lord, in every area, spiritually, emotionally, financially, physically, every area, Father, your hand is upon him. And Father, we thank you for what you are about to do, everything you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do in his life. And I thank you that he has uncommon favor everywhere that he goes. Father God, and that people sense the anointing of God upon his life and that people are set free because of the power of God that's on the inside of him. And Father, we just thank you and praise you that you are his helper as he transitions to this new season of life, Father God, that you help him with the schedules, with the grind of everything that goes on in that league. Father God, I thank you that there's great grace upon him for this season. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. That's my man. <laughs> He's a big old teddy bear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know, though, that, you know, I didn't get where I am at, you know, just by all this. stuck with me is that, you know, God makes you felt the humble, you know, so, you know, this is all about, you know, what you do behind closed doors, so I really, uh, hope you make it good for me to, uh, let you know that David, or just know, like, you're a good, happy family, you know, all God wants is, you know, a humble servant, you know, someone that's really with him, you know, it was great, it was so good, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today without him, and so, I just want to you guys to know that, you know, things are possible. It doesn't matter how, how far you are in a hole. It doesn't you know, matter what you did in the past. Like, I know there's been testimony, you know, but I like I had a great family in my life. Like, God used that for me for his glory. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's crazy to, like, where I'm at, to see where I'm at right now. It's like, you know, it's all by the grace of God. And so I just want to let you guys know that I'm thinking everything, all your thoughts, all your anxiety and fears, going to show up in a big way in your life. Yeah. So, yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. he 
has for their life, the enemy knows. And we are about to step through a threshold, through a door of victory. And this church is coming up to a new level. And because of that, the enemy knows. And let me tell you what, he's scared. He is scared. And I have seen the enemy right when we're about to go through and hit a victory. I've seen him hit from every side. And I just want to honor you guys today. (laughs) Because not only as my parents, because I love you so much, but as my pastor, because spiritually, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. And I see kids that are my age that are going through things they don't have to go through. And because of you guys, you guys are teaching me and bringing me up in the ways of the Lord I haven't veered off. And today I'm stronger than I've ever been because of you two. And you've poured into Avery's life. You've poured into my sister's life and our family's lives and in the lives of everyone here. This church is going to a new level. And they pour into themselves. They read the word. They're praying constantly for all of you so that you can go to a new level. And as they increase, as they grow spiritually, God has called you to grow spiritually with them. And so with that, can we pray for you today? And as a church, the best way to honor them is to pray for them. And God's blessing is on you. So as a church today, we're going to pray for you. Because corporately, how many of you know prayer is pretty powerful? And I believe... The devil's going to run after this because (laughs) we're about to do some damage, you know what I'm saying? So, (laughs) but were you ready to pray for me? I just wanted to say this is, Addie kind of covered it, but in first service, my mom talked about last night, we had a praise party in our house. And let me tell you, every single thing that they talked about today, they do in their own minds. When I've seen them hurting, they... They're pastors. They go through things just like everyone else does. They have hurts. We have all these things that we go through, the family, and we keep private. But I have seen them, even in their hurting, do exactly what they talked about today and stand up and tell themselves, no, we won't be discouraged. We're going to stand up, and we are going to stay in what we believe. And even last night, I saw them hurting, but I saw them get up and praise God. And that inspired me so much because that is what you have taught me and Addie to do. You've taught everyone to do. And even whenever it seems hopeless, you guys encourage us every day. You guys are amazing. (laughs) But seriously, they're the real deal. Everything that they teach you, they do it in private. They do it at home. So just know, whenever they're telling you guys, they give you guys advice, I know. Take it, because they do it in their lives, and it works. So can we all just pray for them and lift them up? All right. So stretch your hands out towards them. So Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the pastors that you've given to us, God. God, they're amazing. You have anointed them. And God, as they grow and increase, I thank you that we're growing and increasing. And I thank you that as we lift them up, God, that you would just encourage them and minister to them and father i thank you that you have placed them here in champaign illinois at midwest believers church and you have appointed anointed and graced them for this season and called them to do and minister to the people of champaign urbana and in me i'm talking to you every lie and plan that you have must be stopped before it can happen and we take authority over you and i speak peace to them right now supernatural peace And I thank you that the wisdom of God is just taking over and that everything, every situation that comes, um, that they would just have supernatural wisdom and know exactly what to do by your spirit. And Holy Spirit, just move through them. I thank you that you're using them to do what you've called them to do. And Father, I plead the blood of Jesus to surround them. And I uh, declare protection over them and health and healing. And I thank you, God, that as their spirits prosper, that we are prospering in Jesus' name, and that this church is going to a new level, 
and that, um, God, your blessing is on them, your blessing is on their lives, and your favor is on them to do what you've called them to do, new connections in Jesus' name. Um, I thank you that they're just supernatural increase in grace for this season that they're in, and that they're going higher, and that as they go higher, we go higher in Jesus' name, and we just bless them right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that was different and <laughs> totally unexpected. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, altar care team. <laughs> or if you want one of these guys to pray with you, come on, they can pray. Praise the Lord. Well, stand up today. Thank you for staying a few minutes over. Wow, we thank you, Jesus funny you know how your kids can minister to you too praise the lord so father we thank you we praise you for your presence today god you're so good and so faithful lord we declare the blessing of god upon every person here as we go our separate ways father we thank you that they're blessed and increasing more and more in every area of their lives and that we walk in protection and father we love and honor you and everywhere that we go we'll display your goodness in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer.